Low lights can be really expensive or really cheap and it's impossible to know whether you're getting what you're paying for or not. And of course it's really important because the right light source is fundamentally essential to a good grow. This was the reason I built my own spectrometer and used it to test light sources and I thought I'd spend some time today showing you how I do that. Well this is the unit I bought from eBay to test. It's 30 watts, 20 pounds, PAR spectrum. Construction looks good, it's made of aluminium and on the back it has a heat sink with a fan. The first concern was this, on arrival it says it's 10 watts and not the 30 watts that was advertised. If you look carefully at the photograph in this seller's listing I think you can see that he's airbrushed out the 10 watts marking which is pretty devious really. So perhaps sellers aren't really to be trusted but anyway this is not the subject of this video we're here to look at the spectrum so let's get on with that. My bench power supply won't run this unit it doesn't go high enough in voltage so I've added this jumper so I can just run one LED. That's not normally necessary for testing LEDs. So we'll turn the voltage up until the LED comes on. I've set the limit of current to 75 milliamps. Sorry, 750 milliamps. And the LED is going. We'll uh, take the spectrum. The experimental arrangement is very straightforward. A little bit Heath Robinson, but that's me. This top emitter is wired to, um, to come on. And I've just taken my spectrometer on a tripod and pointed the slit at it. Just turn the LED on and there's the spectrum. Simple as that. Put the peaks on. So we've got a peak at 443 and a band centered around 650. So it's spreading out to 750, beginning around 575. There's the answer. Let's compare that spectrum with the spectrum they advertise in the sales listing. I'm lining up the wavelength scales on the bottom of both graphs and they're showing reasonably good agreement. There's a peak at 440 and then that big red region. Um, my spectrum shows that there's more, the shift is more to the red than the advertised uh, to the tune of about 50 nanometers. Now let's compare the spectrum we measured against Wikipedia's graphs showing uh, photosynthesis rates and absorption percentages. My takeaway from all of this is that the spectrum is broadly as advertised and the error which we see is actually useful because it still emits substantially and in fact more than the advertised spectrum in the active regions. Of course there are missing um, areas where there is no radiation um, and that's something you'd address with other emitters. So having bought and tested this this grow light would I buy another one? Probably. I would probably have a chat with him about the fact that it's a third the power he advertises it at and that he seems to have airbrushed out the pictures. See what he's got to say for himself there. But in terms of the spectrum it delivers it's broadly as advertised and the discrepancies are not of concern when it comes to having the right spectrum uh, to grow things. Okay, well, whether you're an indoor grower or not, I hope you found that useful and or interesting. Um, thanks for watching.